company. Uh, some people, I mean, I didn't coin the term, but people seem reticent to use it, but I'm going to use it. Paraphony. The situation of paraphonic synthesizers. The Hammond Nova Chord in 1938-39 wasn't paraphonic, and here's why. It did have... It could play all the notes on its keyboard. It did have several, only one envelope control. It had several filters, but the situation didn't become apparent with it because all of the the filters were static. You, t you set the filter and then you played the notes. The filter wasn't, there wasn't change of the filter over time, which is one of the most obvious indicators of a paraphonic situation. So the Hammond Nova chord, it was not apparent that it was paraphonic because there weren't changes over time. In 1964, when the voltage controlled concept really hit home, we had voltage changing over time so that the timbre of a sound changed over time, the amplitude of a, a sound changed over time. And then if you played multiple iterations, it became evident that you were only going through one filter or one amp. Again, string synths, early string synths didn't have filters. So while they were divide down, you still couldn't tell that, you know, they didn't have, well, they didn't have filters. It wasn't evident. It was only in 1973 when Dave Luce was trying to force entire full polyphony through a single filter and single amp with the voltage control changes that took place that it became really evident that, okay, there's something that this doesn't really work. But the other great thing about that was, and other synthesizer companies picked this up and ran with it, notably ARP, if you make a synthesizer that has full polyphony, but a, a single envelope, a single amp, etc., single filter, people can still get polyphonic synth sounds if you just play everything in sort of a homogenous chord, 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 you get all the synth sound, all the polyphonic synth sounds you could ever want. And it sounds great. It's only when you try to play something other than just straight chords, like chords and melodies, etc., that it becomes apparent that you have this weird articulation situation where you have one articulation structure for all of these notes. The ARP Omni was one of the most popular synthesizers in history. And why? Because it was inexpensive and it allowed people to have a polyphonic synthesizer for a very low price. Unfortunately, it was what we would call paraphonic. They did not call it paraphonic then because paraphonic meant something different then. Several synthesizer companies started doing this thing where they would take a divide down structure that may have had a filter for all of it and then multiplying, putting more than one version of that structure in one synth. So you would have these synths like the Korg Trident or the uh, ARP, whatever the ARP one was called. I don't know, I'm totally, someone's screaming it out there, I know. Anyway, you'd have these synthesizers where companies would put multiple synthesizers in one synthesizer so that you could have these complex layered sounds. And what I think people don't realize today is that these synthesizers were designed for working musicians, namely cover bands. Because the bands were using these complex, expensive synthesizers in their recordings, cover bands wanted to be able to have string sounds and synth sounds and lead sounds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, when they were performing popular songs live. They wanted the most realistic synthesizer sounds they could get, and because they couldn't afford the synthesizers that famous rock stars had, and they were in a live situation, they needed something to take care of all of those issues. And there were a lot of live musicians. So these companies made these multiple synthesizers in one case that were mostly divide down and mostly what we would call paraphonic. Confusingly, Roland came out with one of these and it was called the Paraphonic 505. Now, they weren't calling it paraphonic because it was paraphonic, although it was paraphonic. 
They coined the term paraphonic to mean paraphonic, uh, uh, like parallel, multiple parallel synthesizers output. So they named the multiple synthesizers in one box a paraphonic concept, meaning there were multiple synthesizers working in parallel in the, in the synthesizer. That's what paraphonic really means. It has nothing to do with note articulation at all. And you might say to yourself, well, then why are we using it that way? Well, here's why. Roland had that synthesizer. Other bands had that synth. Uh, other companies had that, that that sort of synthesizer, and they were popular for a while. But they still were big and unwieldy. And then in 1983, Yamaha destroyed everything. And how? They came out with the DX7. Now we talk a lot about the DX7 being FM, and it was a new sound. It was very popular, and everyone was all excited about it. But what is rarely spoken about, in regard to the groundbreaking excitement of the DX7 wasn't just that it was a new type of synthesis or that it was inexpensive. It was also that it was polyphonic as heck. It played 16 articulated notes at once. Analog synthesizers, to get that out of an analog synthesizer, you would need a very big, powerful, expensive, heavy synthesizer. This, the digital construct allowed Yamaha to create a, a synthesizer that wasn't as limited in its polyphony, its articulated polyphony, as all the analogs had been. And that was a huge thing. You could play a lot of notes at a time. You could use a sustain pedal and not have your notes robbed away from you. This was a massive thing, and it's not just that it was FM. When that happened, of course, companies started going with digital designs. The digital synthesis concept had finally reached a technological point where it could be easily and cheaply applied, and companies ran with it. As you might imagine, synthesizers increased in polyphony. Uh, you might be saying to yourself, hey Mark, you, you didn't finish that paraphonic thing. I'm going to very shortly because it becomes relevant shortly. So, we have a situation where digital synthesizers took over and synthesizers started having more and more polyphony, articulated polyphony. And that was great for all of us. Okay, so let's fast forward to the 90s. In the 90s, it was many years after synthesizers like the Paraphonic 505 or the ARP Omni had been popular or used. In the 90s, an analog resurgence started to happen. And people started getting excited about analog synthesizers again because they really had their own sound. And because my generation, Gen X, is really obsessed with nostalgia, we were like, hey, remember when we were kids and synthesizers sounded like this? So much different than what synthesizers sound like now? Wouldn't it be cool to play those sounds or use those sounds or go back to synthesizers that sound like that? Isn't that exciting? Let's do it. And so we started digging into all of these synthesizers that had existed in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. In doing so, and looking for all the greats, we, you know, it wasn't that the greats weren't there anymore. We still remembered mini Moogs and memory Moogs and all of these great synthesizers, but there were a lot of synthesizers whose renown were, were, was not carried into the 90s. There were a lot of synthesizers that people didn't remember, a lot of synthesizers that there weren't bands that populate, made them popular. There weren't, you know, there wasn't someone who like had the, you know, like, Jupiter 4 sound. Certainly there were bands that used Jupiter 4, but there wasn't like, wasn't like the mini Moog or the memory Moog where it was like that sound, that amazing, like whatever. So there wasn't always an easy way to articulate the differences between the synthesizers because like I said at the beginning, uh, synthesizer, the synthesizer history was written by marketing people. It wasn't documented. So in looking back, we had to engage in a sort of archaeology and just started digging these things up and going, well, what about this one? You know, did anyone use this in anything? What's it do? How's it sound? 
In this process and at the very beginning of the internet where we were talking about these things, somehow the word paraphonic began to be applied inaccurately. For some reason and somehow, the term paraphonic became applied to synthesizers that were like the paraphonic 505, synthesizers that were had multiple synthesizers in their case and had that same architecture as the 505. And as people heard people talking about that situation, assumptions were made. And the assumption was that paraphonic didn't mean multiple synths using divide down structures with single articulation structures. People assumed that it meant those synthesizers that had divide down and single art articulation structures. It was the kind of misconception that happens all the time on the internet. So over a few short years, paraphonic came to mean synthesizers that were fully poly polyphonic with one envelope, one filter, one amp. And to be honest, it was kind of a good idea to have a term for that architecture because it was a common architecture and it could be referenced to it. If you say paraphonic, you don't have to say, okay, it's divide down and it only has one envelope and one filter and blah, blah, blah. You could say paraphonic, people knew what you meant. So I kind of endorse this misuse of this word because it gave people a word to describe this common type of synthesizer. But the most important part of this whole thing, and the thing that drives me the most crazy, is that somehow that concept got mixed up and conflated with polyphony. The paraphonic term describes how notes are articulated, but does not in any way describe how many notes are played. And the term polyphony means how many notes does it play? Because paraphonic synthesizers don't play like a piano they don't have individual articulation people started saying that it wasn't the right way to do it or it wasn't accurate or it wasn't real polyphony which doesn't make any sense paraphonic synths are more polyphonic than even you know a CS80 or especially a Prophet 5 your Pathetic, no, it's not pathetic, they're actually really good. I've done demos of them, look for them. Uh, your ARP Omni plays all of its notes at once. It's more polyphonic than a Prophet 5. But you don't have that articulation. But articulation is not note count. Articulation is not note count. Paraphonic is something that describes articulation, how each note is articulated, whether or not it has voices per note. Paraphonic synths do not have voice per note. Limited, par limited polyphony synthesizers often do. Bob Moog even asserted that back in the late 70s that maybe these new synthesizers with limited polyphony should be called multiphonic to sort of discern them from synthesizers that had full polyphony like the Polymoog. And you might be listening to me right now and saying, wait, you're using this all wrong. You're doing this all wrong. But it's not me that's wrong. It's the narrative that has switched into things that don't make sense and make it difficult to be accurate when we're describing the articulation of keyboards. A polyphonic synthesizer is one where all the notes play. A limited polyphony synthesizer is one where some of the notes, some number of the notes can be played at once. A paraphonic synth could be either one of those. And there have been iterations. For example, the Poly 800 could play eight notes at a time and it only had it only played eight notes at a time and those were all put through a single filter amp envelope structure it was actually a paraphonic synth with also limited polyphony which is probably one of the reasons why some of us really don't like it but so many of the divide down synthesizers were paraphonic they only had one filter uh and so what it comes down to is when we talk about synthesizers polyphony whether or not its polyphony is articulated is a different issue deserving a different description. That's why a polyphonic synthesizer can also be a paraphonic synthesizer. There is literally no such thing as real polyphony. 
And if there is, real polyphony would be if all of the notes on the keyboard play, not whether or not those notes are articulated over time. <laughs> 